Oh, hi. Welcome back to my closet where time passes the exact same as if I'm outside of my closet. Yeah. Today, I'm actually going to be updating a past episode. Developing 2.0! Today's gonna be a different episode. It's going to be actually a revisit on the lab box. So as you probably remember, more or not, I don't know, this could be the first video that you've watched. And in that case, you should probably go to that video first, just to give you context. And then you come back to this one and we can party together. In that first episode, I said things could probably change in my developing since that was basically the first time doing it. And it has. A lot has happened. I've seen some, I've experienced some emotional traumas. <laughs> so, I'm here to update you. Thus the name of the episode, 2.0, The Update. It's like every good sequel. Hmm, can it stand on its own? You'll be the judge. This is gonna be just me talking about new processes, new things I found out, and blah 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 So, let's get to it. The first thing that I will do is take you to the story corner. Since the beginning of this year, I've been doing a photo project. It's called Pro Mist Night Photography. Basically, it's me going around at midnight taking photos of massive neon signs. So I've been doing it since January. One of those times I went out was with Grainy Days. I'm sure you've seen his videos on it. If it's not up here, it'll be down there. I shot four rolls, a Chinatown, and around Miracle Mile. So, as you know from my very, very first episode, I developed my own film now. I lost almost all the rolls. Yeah, the night photography was shot with Cinestill. So I've never developed Cinestill 120 in uh, the lab box, and it went horribly wrong. Uh, for some reason, it did not seed into the slot. Didn't do this, did it. For some reason, this didn't happen. This didn't happen. None of that happened. I opened it up, I did everything right, and I opened it up, and it was like blah, blah. <laughs> It's really hard. <sighs> I, I punched a lot of things. I said a, a few bad words. Like poopy face, turd gobbler, wiener puncher. Uh, it was a very, very sad day, and I will never get those images back. So I'm gonna have to reshoot them. I contacted Labbox and I was like, yo, sup, WTF, what happened? They are not 100% sure uh, what it could have been. I do not think it was user error since it happened on three of my rolls. Uh, it just, the problem was it wasn't seeding into the chamber properly. One thing that they said was, this sort of thing can happen if you're using PET-based film. Uh, as far as I know, that stands for polyethylene tetraphytalate. Uh, it's some sort of maybe adhesive. Um, if any one of you is a chemist, uh, let me know. Tell me how poor I'm doing at that pronunciation. So pet-based films, don't use them. But apparently Cinestill is not a pet-based coating. It uses Excetrate or Eastar. I don't know what that is either, which they don't think that should be happening, but it is happening. Maybe because they roll it themselves. I don't know, they don't know. So to be honest, I'm gonna stop developing Cinestil 120 in the lab box. I don't wanna lose any more shots. I was depressed all day and started drinking very early. So I'm going to provide a list of, to you of films I would just be, just don't do. Don't develop in the lab box. Street Pan, don't use Street Pan. Rolly, Retro, 80 or 400. Faux Pan, all of them. No goes. Do not do it. Cat Labs film? Never heard of them. I'll try them, but I won't develop them. Breger Pancro. Sounds like a food of some sort. Like it's the way you cook spaghetti. Those stay clear for 120 developing. 35 is just like a breeze. You just like put it in and go. Pskang! Now I got that out of my way. I've removed the negative energy. I've moved past it. This is my therapy. So I'm guessing most of you guys do not have a professional dark room. Or just do it in your bathroom. It's fun to do it in there. The mess is easy to clean up, you know? So one of the first things I noticed when I started hanging up my film to dry is uh, that they kind of, they uh, they were all dangling weird because uh, they weren't level. So it would be all curled and whatnot, you know? And then it's hard to scan. So what I've done is I've gotten one of these, which is just like a stretchy version of a zip tie. Binder clips, easy. You get them at the dollar store. And you hook this guy up Hang this up to your shower rod like this. That will give you an even center of gravity for your film to hang. Then you take these bad boys, boop, 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 clip them to the bottom. Gives it some good weight. That way, you know, it's going to dry straight. So you got those clips. <laughs> so let's move on. So the next new update, buy one of these. It is a Patterson 
film squeegee. Has little uh, has little squeegees thingies right here. After you're done developing, -doo 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 -doo, you hang it up and pfft, right. We're all doing this in the bathroom anyway, right? Just put it over your tub and go. The thing I was noticing is that, yeah, I would get some spots here and there because um, the water would just uh, collect on the film. So this helps, this helps dry the film out. Now it's easy breezy, beautiful color for uh, The next thing, when you're pouring your chems, I was using the jars, the mason jars, and it was going everywhere. It was like Daffy Duck speaking to you. It was just everywhere. I started just the measuring the chemicals out and it's a good lip for the lab box. And then you know the amount of chemicals going in your lab box. You know, uh, I usually do around 450 milliliters because 490 is as much as the lab box can hold. And so 450 just makes things a little cleaner. So I've been setting my sous vide to 116 to heat up the chems. The water inside will heat up to, you know, 116, but because the mason jars don't have the heat penetration, it's not getting up to 116. Well, yeah, 10, yeah, about 15, 110. So at the very, very beginning of the process, I I heat them all up, and when I'm about ready to go, when I'm about ready to hit the button, take the chemicals out so they can cool down. Put the thermometer in, do the pre-bath, check the chem, be like, okay. If I need to, I run a little bit of wa cold water. Psst. Put it in. Cool. Pre-bath done. Now I can move on to the chemicals. So there you go. That's a little thing, a little tidbit. Have a towel around. This thing. One of these guys. Darker the better because those chemicals, whew, put it down, collects all the things, and then you um, have a nice washcloth afterwards. Just, you know, your face get, get sweaty in the bathroom, so you just wash it all off. Use the same towel. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Don't do that. That's terrible. You're going to need paper towels too. Boom. So you clean everything up. Paper towels. Hand towel. There you go. Oh, you know what? Here's another one. Just to make sure I'm doing things on the level, uh, I contacted Cinestill to to ask if splitting the chemicals up the way I was was a good idea. And they said, well, I guess it's working for you, but I would make them all at the same time. And so then I was going to do that at some point. Uh, and then uh, I don't have big enough bottles to do that. So I'm going down steady and straight. Just gonna break up the chemicals like I was telling you. Theoretically, you could do both ways. You're easy peasy pumpkin squeezy one very handy tool that I've been using and didn't realize I was going to use uh, was this like phone gooseneck phone holder thing. So for uh, my birthday this year in, in February, uh, sure, you can send me presents. I won't, uh, I won't turn them down. Uh, my mom got this phone holding gooseneck thingy, my Bob, that you can just, you know, make it any shape you want it to. And then just like basically put your phone in, right? Uh, boom. Look at that. You don't, and then just twist that down on a uh, 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 nice and secure. Then you get that where you want it to be. Uh, uh. See, it's perfect. You don't want to be picking up your phone with, with your, with your drug hands, chemically hands. You don't want to be touching and, and caressing your phone. Cause that thing goes up to your ear. You don't want this like seeping in chemicals into your brain and turning you into an alien. Keep it here, hands free. Just go boop. Next, my mom got this thing for me um, as a joke. I think she, she's like, hi, you probably won't use it, but um, I do use it, mom. And say thanks to my mom, right? Cause like, she's great. You don't know how great she is, but I know how great she is. So you can just say hi, say, hey, you know, thanks. Thanks for making such a great kid. Is that a compliment from me to me? Let's move on. Hey, guess what? You just shot 35. Welcome to the club. You want to develop it now? You got to get the little tongue out of the cartridge. I'm not going to lie. This was my uh, least favorite thing. It was a pain in the ass. So I don't know if you remember, but when I backed the Kickstarter, uh, one of the other gifts that they would give you uh, to retrieve your 35 from its cartridge, your 35 film from its cartridge, was uh, this film retriever. A little, little thingy you put in and you just pull out and it's magic. It's not really magic. I was spending like 25 minutes, which is practically the time you spend developing to retrieve from this case. It was bull I don't want to do that. I told you I got the lab box so I didn't have to do that. I could spend the time developing and not trying to get things out of this. I got angry and I bent it. It was like this. Ah! 
No, don't buy one, they're useless. What do you do when you see no hope ahead? You just wanna bury your head in the sand like an ostrich. Hey, YouTube. How do you do it? Well, some uh, really clever homie on the uh, interweb was like, do it this way. I'm gonna link him down. I don't remember his name, uh, but he'll be there. So he'll be down, he'll be down there. Um, but he said, all you gotta do is uh, grab yourself another piece of film, like this, like so, just normal film. As you know, I royally messed this roll up. He did say you can use another roll of film, just pull out a little bit of leader. It's not gonna actually be that big of a deal. Just you wet one side of this with like saliva or water, and then you insert it into the cartridge, like that. And just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and boop. And then you wind it in. Once you start seeing it wind in, now this is empty, so I, you know, I can't actually do that. But you wind it in, and just a little bit, you're like, oh, it, it sucks this guy up in. And you're like, sweet. Now, the little bit of saliva slash water, you don't have to lick it, it will adhere to the other film in here, and you just go, whipping, and it just pops out. This literally takes 30 seconds. 30 seconds, 25 minutes. Don't buy that thing. Don't buy it. Don't do it. It's all you need. So let me go through my notes. I talked about this. I talked about the easy pour. I talked about a towel. I talked about the temperature that I set my sous vide to. I talked about hanging film. That's the uh, new information I want to uh, present to you. You know, I'll let you know if there's a 3.0. Overall, now that I've done it, much more than in the past. I could see why people do the other way. If you get really good at loading a Patterson tank, I'm sure it's it's a much easier cleanup process. You know, it's give and takes. So yeah, you have to clean the tank after every use for the lab box, but it's also really easy to roll. Sometimes your rolls get snagged if you don't do it properly. You have to really be careful to make sure your spools are spooled properly to uptake the film. But you know, honestly, it's it's not bad. I, I was clocking in at about 30 minutes uh, a roll. Overall, start to finish, which is a cleanup. I'm still happy with it, even though I had that little snafu. They were gonna be magic. Sorry that I will never be able to present them to you. But there'll be others. I'm really gonna go back and take photos of them anyway, so it's like, it's just getting out of my house. It's like when I have a parking spot, I don't wanna leave. It's like, it's, it's a gladiator out there for parking. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna go um, eat some fried chicken now. Cause uh, I have a hankering. Chicky on the flip side, pow!